morning, everyone. Thank you, Katia, for the... Okay, uh, thank you, Katia, for the presentation and thank you for this opportunity to present my work in this Johnson Second webinar. Um, today, I will present a study uh, that we conducted in the Image Processing Laboratory um, in the University of Valencia in collaboration with other important research groups. Uh, it is titled Mapping Canopy Level of Threads Using Top of Atmosphere Sentinel 2 Data in Google Earth Engine. Um, uh, uh, first of all, a uh, little uh, a little background of this study. Uh, when we talk about retrieval methods, we have to take into account the type of remote sensing data we are using. Uh, at the top of the atmosphere, uh, we have the TOA radiance. Uh, that is the signal captured by the sensor. The TOA data is affected by the atmospheric conditions, such as aerosol scattering, water vapor, or ozone concentration. On the other part, we have the bottom of atmosphere uh, part uh, with the surface reflectance. This is, uh, the, this is the data used for the most of retrieval methods, uh, but it requires an atmospheric correction state that can introduce important errors in the retrieval. Uh, later in the presentation, we are going to explain uh, how to use the TOA data directly without avoiding the atmospheric correction step. Um, when we talk about the retrieval methods, we have the parametric regression typically used to obtain a vegetation index and the non-parametric regression based on data driving techniques uh, where we can find the machine learning regression algorithms. For example, the Gaussian processes regression or GPR. On the other hand, we have the retrieval methods based on radiative transfer models that traditionally use a local table based inversion. Uh, for the vegetation retrieval specific uh, from uh, air observation data, methods of different families can be combined to create the so-called hybrids. In this case, the data from the physically based models that simulate the interactions between vegetation and radiation serves as an input for the non-parametric methods, which to learn the relationships between spectral data and biophysical variables, which describe status and vitality of vegetation. Uh, the core algorithm used in this study is the kernel-based Gaussian processes regression. This is a non-parametric method. Uh, that means not limited by a functional form. So rather than calculating the probability distribution of parameters of a specific function, GPR calculates the probability distribution over all admissible functions that fit the data. Uh, summarizing, hybrid methods combine the generic properties of physically based models together with the flexibility and computational efficiency of machine learning regression algorithms. Uh, <clears throat> within such a scheme, the machine learning regression algorithm learns the nonlinear relationship between the pairs of reflectance and vegetation thread of interest as generated for the physically based. This hybrid way enables the potential to achieve both accurate and fast retrievals, even providing uncertainties with the GPR. Uh, with the advent of cloud computing platforms such as Google Air Engine, satellite-based vegetation mapping progressed towards a new paradigm. In case of, of Google Air Engine, it allows to develop our algorithms for real world applications that can be applied from the local to planetary scale using the vast amount of satellite data already available in the platform. However, uh, Google Air Engine still have some limitations. Uh, for example, Google Air, uh, GPR, uh, Google, uh, Gaussian process regression is not part of the platform, of this platform. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, there are memory constraints in Google Air Engine that made the implementation of the GPR algorithm a real challenge. Uh, also, with methods uh, such as active learning with uh, 
we can develop lightweight model for further implementation in Google Air Engine. <clears throat> uh, summarizing the problems and motivations we found in this story, uh, we can tell that despite their diversity, most developer retrieval methods exploit uh, BOA reflectance. Uh, that means after an atmospheric correction, algorithms has been applied to the radiance acquired at the sensor level. Uh, that means the TOA data. An alternative, <clears throat> sorry, an alternative approach to avoid the uncertainty that the atmospheric correction state uh, may introduce is to use upscale training data simulations from canopy to atmospheric levels and derive the vegetation variables directly from TOA data. A powerful tool to implement this approach are the cloud computing platforms uh, such as Google Air Engine, as I mentioned before, which open new possibilities to develop rock trail retrieval models applicable to any corner of the world. Um, the main objectives in these studies are, as we can see in the slide, uh, to develop a hybrid model based on Gaussian processes regression for processing Sentinel-2 top of atmosphere reflectance into crop threads. That is without the need of an atmospheric correction state. Uh, also using active learning to provide accurate and lightweight retrieval models. Other objective is the implementation of these developed GPR models into the Google Air Engine environment for the smooth crop threads mapping over croplands from local to national scale. Um, the optical remote sensing data we use in this study is free and open access and comes from the ESA Sentinel-2, a pair of satellites which provide very convenient data for agriculture applications. The level one product is the TOA reflectance and the level two product correspond to BOA air reflectance. And we use, um, in, in the case of Sentinel-2, we use 10 of the uh, 13 bands available. Uh, uh, we don't. We didn't use the bands uh, related with uh, atmosphere studies. Um, uh, in this study, we use in situ data from two different locations that are typically used for validation of high spectral missions, such as in Matt and Chime. The first one is located within communal farmlands in the north of Munich, Germany. Um, the data set correspond to the Munich North ESAR campaign. The second data set comes from two campaigns conducted on over cornfields located near Grosseto, Italy. Uh, the software about the software used in, in this study, uh, uh, we use our mod that runs leaf and canopy radiative transfer models and allows to train and run machine learning algorithms for vegetation retrieval. Another software is uh, we use is ALG. It's a toolbox that allows running atmospheric radiative transfer models such as Motran, 6SB, Libratran. Uh, we also use SNAP. It's a software, popular software from ESA that we use for comparison with our, with our developed models. Um, and finally, uh, yes, and no less important, uh, we use Google Air Engine, the cloud computing platform uh, that includes remote sensing data, such as the Sentinel-2 catalog, mm, yes, as we mentioned before. Um, this is the this is the flow chart of the so the workflow. At the top, you can see the simulation step, then the optimization and training, and at the bottom the implementation in Google Learning. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, the first step uh, you uh, we simulate with prospect 
uh, um, prospect for um, for sale, those models were combining to generate the canopy reflectance data set. Then this data set was coupled with the atmospheric simulations from the 6SB to upscale the data set to total atmosphere reflectance. So in the middle of the flowchart is the optimization and training step. Um, the full data set is optimized applying an active learning technique called Euclidean distance-based diversity. Um, the resulted data set is used to train the GPR to obtain the active learning optimizer model of each specific variable. Um, in this part, we have the implementation uh, of the model in Google Learn Engine. Here, the models are, uh, are imported into Google Learn Engine after generated, generated uh, then in using ALG, R mode, as I mentioned before. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> Here in Google Air Engine, uh, models uh, GPR used for mapping vegetation variables from a level level one. Uh, in this case, with GPR, we have the capability to provide uh, uncertainties. Uh, now we, we can see uh, some results of this study. Um, in, in this case, here we can see how the active learning method was applied to reduce the full training data pool to the most informative samples. Um, the two statistics uh, used were normalized room squared error and, and R squared. Uh, they were used to compare the performances across the variables against the Munich field data set. All analyzed variables um, converge rapidly to stably, to stable accuracy. And this figure demonstrates that only a few hundred simulations are required to optimize results. Um, the, in this part, we can see the ground validation exercise that shows higher accuracy for the crop threads over the Munich site than over the Grosseto site. Uh, that different can be explained because the Munich data set was involved in the active learning tuning of the model, but Grosseto was used as an independent data set for, for validation only. Um, in case of Rosetto, you, we can see the LAI and the canopy dry matter content with very good performance, the canopy chlorophyll content with uh, good performance, around 22% um, of normalized domain squared error. And finally, the canopy water content with a moderate performance with a normal item error error around 16%. Um, uh, here we we are in the part of the ma of mapping um, <clears throat> mapping a local scale um, in this in this case we include the maps of uncertainties um these maps are these maps are over Munich side, the, the, the biophysical mass obtained with the GPR models uh, in Google Learn Engine are plausible and represent property, the spatial variability of the surface. As you can see, um, also at the bottom, as I mentioned before, we include the mass of relative uncertainties. Uh, <clears throat> The areas with high uncertainties uh, often correspond to bare soil, 
which is a surface where the model retrieval has some limitation. Um, the GPR maps obtained with Google Earth Engine were compared against the ISA SNAP software and um, vegetation estimates uh, show high consistency of both retrievals. Also, it's not overestimate LAI, as is clearly seen in the scatter plot at the bottom. That indicates that our model show more realistic values. Um, national scale maps for the integrity of Germany were also generated with the GPR model. In Google Earth Engine, we considered a uh, time span in state of, of a specific date. Um, finally, apply the stati statistical median estimator to obtain a spatially continuous coverage. Here you can see four agricultural regions in Germany with different field characteristics. Uh, there is no validation data set available for this subset. It is shown only to prove the capability of Google Earth Engine for large scale mapping and to demonstrate the convenience of using the uncertainty as a quality indicator for masking areas with, uh, with lower retrieval accuracy. In this case, we only show the pixels with an uncertainty value less than 30%. We arrived to some conclusions. For example, uh, adaptive learning enables optimization of GPR models for cloud computing implementation. Uh, GPR models optimized, the, uh, optimized it with the Euclidean distance-based diversity obtained high accuracy over the Munich site, including overall lower uncertainties. For Grosetto site, uh, the main objective of reducing the size of the models was achieved while maintaining good accuracy. And uh, the maps of uncertainties provided by the GPR model can help to mask, mask out areas where the accuracy decreased. In addition, Google Earth Engine allows the automatic processing of large scale maps of agricultural fields as we demonstrate with the nationwide maps. Finally, uh, this developed approach open a promising path toward operational mapping of essential crop threats from local to large scale. Um, also, we have some challenges um, some opportunities, for example, uh, further, further efforts are required to develop robust models for lift level variables. The key uh, lies in the quality of the training data. And uh, also this study can be expanded by the implementation of the model at the continental scale, taking advantage of the cloud computing capabilities. In addition, the proposed models can be developed for any optical sensor data if it is available in Google Engine, for example, Landsat or MODIS. Uh, uh, also an important is, uh, is to include a gap filling step in order to preserve time labels uh, without cloud gaps. Um, Finally, uh, using this approach, approach, we can address important challenges, social food security and monitoring vegetation dynamics worldwide. Uh, this is a repository where the developer uh, Google Earth Engine code uh, can be found for testing the demos. Uh, Using the JavaScript, it is possible to select the crop thread that you want to map and also the location or country. Um, um, here you can find the model input parameters used to simulate the data the, to a reflectance the, in databases. Um, 
here you can see the main reference uses in this story. Um, I would like to thank those who supported this work and the researchers who collaborate with us, especially Johan Barrels, my uh, PhD advisor, Katia Berger, Matias Salinero, Jorge Vicen, Luca Pipia, and, and other co-authors. Thanks for your support and collaboration. And if you, for finally, for any further information, and you can contact us via these channels. And thank you very much for the opportunity.